Man Waker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast is supported by patrons on Patreon. To find out more or to add your support for as little as a dollar a month, visit patreon.com slash manawaker. Welcome to Manawaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm CB Drogi. This week, my brand new statue of Poseidon by G. Arthur Brown. You can't park statues of Poseidon here, the lot attendant informed me. His accent was Brooklyn, his neck was stained with a blue ring, his gold ring was turning his finger green. I did not judge him, though that was my job. I was even wearing my black robe. I did, however, ignore the man as I opened the door and stepped out of my twenty-five-foot statue of Poseidon. That's a pretty sweet statue of Poseidon you got there said a nudie-suited cowboy exiting a 70s caddy with steer horns on the hood. I bet you paid a pretty penny for it. Hey, said the enraged attendant, mopping sweat from his brow. I said you can't park your statue here. I'm only going to be here for five minutes, I said to the attendant, not making eye contact. This is a Christian church, mister. You can't leave a huge idol like this in the parking lot. I'll move it in five minutes. I just have to pop inside for some holy coffee. Believe me, I'm already late for work, so if I'm not back in, say, seven minutes, just tow the damn thing. Who's gonna tow a statue of Poseidon? Allow me to introduce myself, the cowboy cut in. He handed a business card to the attendant, who looked at it like it was in a language he'd never heard of. I'm Arthur P. Daly, owner and president of Large Art Movers. They call me Large Art, and I move Large Art, and that's why I come here to church to praise the Lord. "'Cause your name and job are the same?' I asked. "'No, because I'm rich. Nobody else in the large art moving game right now. But a sweet puppy like this moves herself. I can just call my brother-in-law Julio if this fellow ain't back in five minutes.' Seven minutes,' I insisted. "'There might be a line for coffee. It is Sunday morning, after all.' The attendant threw the business card down, scratched his head, and spat what looked like grape jelly onto the ground by his feet. "'All right, seven minutes, and I'll be counting.' Once inside the megachurch and on the third floor, I bypassed the coat check girl and headed straight for the holy coffee fountain, to hell with convention. I would be perfectly happy sipping coffee in my top coat. Did I feel like a heathen? You bet. I was driving a pagan monument after all, but it wasn't as if I was doing bumps of mummy powder off my knuckle in the sanctuary anymore. Baby steps. The line was not long, so it was mere moments before I was face to face with the short female barista acolyte. I'll take one holy coffee and a buttered carpenter's muffin. Real butter, please. Uh, your honor, we only got margarine and spray on not without my butter. What's not without my butter? It tastes just like real butter, but you can spritz it right on the muffin. It's very convenient. Is it sanctified Christian? I asked her. How can you tell? she said, grabbing the bottle and examining the label. You'll see a small blue cross on the back, usually toward the bottom. It certifies that Jesus Christ himself has sanctioned the preparations for this food stuff. Doesn't look like it. There's a little green peace symbol and what looks like a goat head. I felt like a hypocrite motoring around in a sea god, yet sticking fast to never consuming pagan foods. Fine, I'll take the muffin without any butter-like substances. Another barista acolyte strolled over and said, I can make you some butter, Your Honor. It's no problem. No, I don't want to be a bother, I said, checking my watch. I had only three more minutes. Really, it's no big deal, she said, and began shaking a carton of whipping cream vigorously. What are you doing? I said. I'm in a hurry. This is how you make butter, she said flatly. Fresh butter is better anyway. I appreciate the thought, I said through gritted teeth. But on second thought, I'll just take the holy coffee. Church service doesn't even start for fifteen minutes. Relax, I got this. Languidly, she jostled the cream. Yeah, I used to do this for my grandmother. I'm in a bit more of a hurry than that, I said in a near whisper. See, I have to get to my job. I'm judging this morning. The young woman dropped the container, spilling cream all over the floor. An audible collective gasp hit me hard, and I knew I was not getting my holy coffee. I slunk away without objection and headed for the elevator to take me back downstairs. There was an old Korean man already in the elevator. He held the door for me and smiled wide. 
Thanks, I said. Don't mention it, the old-timer replied. Say, do you have a moment to talk about the god Apollo? He fished a brochure out of his jacket. No, not interested. I'm already driving the latest model Poseidon. Oh, he said, crestfallen. He tucked the pamphlet back into his interior pocket. I tried to avoid making eye contact. He cleared his throat. I did not look over. He cleared it louder. I glanced at him. He held out his fist and offered, Bump of mummy dust? The day was not starting out the way I had planned. It was either an uphill battle or it was all downhill from here. A little mummy dust might help me know the difference. This has been My Brand New Statue of Poseidon, written by G. Arthur Brown. For more information about Manawaker Studios' other projects, including books and games, visit manawaker.com, which is also where you should go to learn more about the authors featured on this podcast or to get details about submitting a story. The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. Manawaker Studios' director of Dice is Ben Baston. I'm C.B. Drogi. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at C.B. D-R-O-E-G-E. Thanks for listening. On the next installment of Manawaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast, He won't love you. Not all of you. My own voice surprised me. Unintendedly candid. Only the part he knows, not like I would, went unsaid.